Hey, I'm Melissa Cross, and you're watching Bridge the Atlantic. <laughs> Hey, how's it going? For Bridge the Atlantic, I'm singer-songwriter Marcian Valley from Canada. And I'm music web designer Ross Barber-Smith from Scotland. And you're watching Encore, a show featuring advice for musicians from the industry's finest. If you're new here, subscribe. Today we're joined by vocal coach and founder of Zen of Screaming, Melissa Cross out of New York. Melissa's worked with many of the world's top metal vocalists, including Corey Taylor, Randy Blythe, Oliver Sykes, and Matthew Tuck. How would you say that you encourage artists to sing like themselves rather than imitating other artists? And are there specific exercises or mindset that can help artists find their authentic voice? The whole basis of my technique is to stop listening to yourself. You need to be your voice, not be like another voice. The exercises that I give, they're not supposed to sound good. They're kind of silly. But they create a physical sensation that you're supposed to channel very subtly when you actually perform. You don't like perseverate on like, I, I need to feel this buzz in my head. It's not, it's like you pretend that the buzz is happening. You don't like wait for the buzz to come. So like, for instance, I have ideas like above the pencil, which is a phenomena that happens when you go, you, you, because the amount of space in the throat creates this kind of resonance that resonates against the bones in your face it feels like the sound is actually emanating from above a pencil in your teeth well, on certain vowels you can really feel the buzz but when you're performing you don't wait for a buzz <laughs> well maybe if you want to get high afterwards but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you don't wait for that physical sensation you pretend that you are feeling that sensation and that makes the body behave in a certain way that creates really good sound, i.e. a lowered larynx, more room in the throat, more overtones. You won't push because there's a whole great consequence of imagining above the pencil. So the idea of imagination as opposed to judgment and listening is at the basis of my technique. That's the biggest hurdle to get over, I think, is listening it to is. yourself. So you can't get rid of it, but you can replace it mm -hmm. because there's only so much room in your mind at any given time. You've been doing this for, for a long time. Are you at a place now where there's not even a thought in your mind when you sing? Never. No? I'm a human being and I'm also like totally ADD. <laughs> <laughs> so what goes on when you're singing? It's a very good question. I allow everything. Like it's all of a sudden I was like, okay, red. Okay. So I take the vowel and I smear a vowel across the venue so it bounces off the wall. So say the word, the lyric is, hey, and the operative vowel is A. I go, Hey, and the A goes, boom, 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 bounces off the wall, bounces over there. And then, woo, then I say, oh, did I do my laundry? Oh, shit. I forgot. Oh, that guy's cute. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I wonder if that, you know, like it goes a million miles a minute. There's like, I allow all that gibberish, right? But if I you don't stop it, you're just adding more thoughts, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Just let it flow. The music has a language that is not verbal. It's all feelings, right? And so I allow myself to uh, allow those feelings to channel through my voice because that's what makes a voice good, a voice that's connected to feelings. Otherwise, it's hollow. It actually sounds different. I, I can show you, you know. Yeah, it please, sounds please, let's do it. Oh, shit, I knew you were yeah. going to say that. <laughs> oh, you can't have oh Melissa Cross on the show and you don't give us some examples. Oh, Come my on. God. Okay, I'm going to try and sound like somebody else. Okay. It's 9 a.m. Got to get up and go again. Another dollar. Right? Okay, that's it. Sure. That's the one where I'm like not connected to any feelings there. Mm -hmm. I was just, okay. It's 9 a.m. I got to get up and go again. Another dollar. Another day. See, I was in Completely it. Completely different. That's a different sound because my feelings. Like you're, you're talking to us. It sounds like you're communicating exactly. something Exactly. And that's what non-classical music is supposed to do. That's how you get people to connect emotionally. And also, there was something different going in my eyes. You see, because the other time I was like, there's nothing there. Because I'm so into myself You're trying here. to be somebody else mm -hmm. or be what I'm supposed to be or what you think I, I think you should think I should be, you know, that whole thing, mm -hmm. right? That narcissism mm -hmm. or you, you just like go there and that takes a lot of courage. It's no coincidence that a lot of the singers that I teach that have had a really tough life are incredible singers because they just don't cover up anymore. They don't care. They're perfect pieces of toast. 
you know, they've been toasted. They've seen the demon. They've seen it all. It's like, okay, going to bring it on. Exactly. Like Corey Taylor. Corey Taylor is so connected to his singing voice. Always. He's connected to everything. He's a bass and a tenor. He has like all these like colors. Right. So I don't teach that. That's like no. given. What are some of the biggest mistakes that you see vocalists making and how can they know when they're damaging their voice? I'm going to tell you what the basis is. Okay. It's the coordination of the air pressure in your lungs and the vocal folds or cords closing. Plus like the opening outside of the vocal folds. In other words, there's a resonance strategy, right? There's a lot of air management. It's not, it's not about breathing in and out. It's about riding the air without thinking about it. But that's foundational. You cannot scream well if you haven't got that under your belt. This is what the biggest mistake that people make when they start to scream. They imitate what they hear and they use an emotional impetus to create the sound. So the emotional inference of a scream is tension, aggravation, all the things that will hurt your voice. There needs to be a different trajectory to get to the scream that is not emotionally based. The emotion has to go in at the end. I mean, I have to channel it back in. There's different kinds of screams. There's the kind that you do putting some heat on it. That's called yeah. hybrid. You see, you still have the note in there. So that's a split function of the actual vocal folds. Part of the folds are chaotically blowing like ah, you see there's no note in there but if i go eh, there's a different kind of scream called false chord scream which is okay. like ah, that's metallica machine head pantera that's also correct but the way to do that is without overdoing that okay people get hurt when they make that laryngeal thrust and they overdo the muscles in the throat and they don't use the air pressure muscles you see what takes the weight off the throat is the aerodynamic aspect of air pressure in other words the diaphragm it's not you don't sing from your diaphragm never do that please do not sing for me never say that word unless you're talking about your your girlfriend's like birth control like diaphragms just stay out of it okay so <laughs> it's the worst kind of training oh the worst kind of training for non-classical music there is a balance the aggression when it's imitated is usually put in the throat muscles because that's what people recall when they get angry. Too much like that and less of a counterbalance with some uh, intercostal musculature down below. When you hear a pitch, my vocal folds are actually vibrating cycles per second. That's the definition of pitch. After the vocal folds are doing their thing, there's a filter, like a mixing board, that's your throat, which is the space in which the resonance occurs, which creates other waves, their resonance strategies. For instance, the vowel E, I can do, I can go E, I can go E, I can go E, 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 E. See, there's different sounds that E makes. So and what are you changing those, there to change those? The shape of my throat. Understanding the source is the vocal folds, right? That's like the guitar string. And the space in the throat is like... It's the, like an amplifier. You can add different colors mixing and board. different EQ. Yeah, mixing board. yeah, you can add 5K, add 2K. Yes. I think you're, you're explaining that ridiculously well. Good, I think because that, it helps. That resonates with me. It resonates with me. Yeah, yeah cool. Nice <laughs> oh, joke. I like it. I like it. Hey -oh. Boom. Is this mic on? Is this on? That's hello, it. Hello, hello. Is there any just very quick tips to just take care of their voice? You need to know the material. If they're actual sung notes... You need to know them, not just know it like you're singing with somebody on the radio. You need to know the notes because if you don't know the stuff really well, chances are the sloppiness is going to make you overwork. You need to warm up. It doesn't take very long. Don't go cold. Do not talk over loud music. And when you do meet and greets, because you do this all day at concerts and you don't know that you're doing this and all yeah. of a sudden, you know, it's you realize that it, it wasn't the show that like trashed you. It was like what happened after and before the show, especially when you're drinking afterwards. You need to like either put your finger on your ear or put a clean cigarette butt in your ear <laughs> if you haven't got any cotton wool, right? Put it in your ear so you can monitor the level of your speech because you could do a lot of damage like just by talking incorrectly. I would say respect your voice. You're not, it's not invincible, but don't be a pussy. Don't be, you know, precious and don't, oh God, please. Don't say, uh, 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 you know, don't treat it like it's like that you're special because it's, it's not. Everybody's got one, just like an asshole, right? So it's not 
it's not precious, but you have to take care of it. It's not invincible. So don't slam it. Get a good teacher. And uh, the most important thing is to love it. Yep. Because if you're doing it for money. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That's, that's the funniest thing we said on the show. <laughs> that Ever. is. That is the funniest thing. It's not. I mean, if you could do something <laughs> else, if you could possibly do anything else, do it. Like this is only for people that will not survive spiritually and emotionally if they don't do it. We hope you enjoyed this Encore episode. For more from Bridget Atlantic, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And if you want to pick up one of our shirts, visit our website and use the coupon code BTA Rocks to receive 20% off your order. This episode was brought to you by Social Surge, your source for social media marketing and online music promotion. Check them out because they do what, Ross? They keep the show alive. And That's if right. you would like to sponsor the show and become an official Bridger, join us on Patreon from as little as a dollar per month. Not only will you be able to showcase your band or brand to our amazing audience, but your support will allow us to keep bringing you weekly videos here at Bridge the Atlantic. That's right. Thanks so much. See you later. Bye.